I think of the cultural playbook or the culture blueprint that I created after my first year here at OSU. Um, I took that first year as what I call an observation year because I was coming from the Gophers. All I knew was I was a player for four years. I coached for five years. And when I was at Minnesota coaching, we were in the national championship game all five years and four of them we won, right? And so all I knew was success. And so I come into this team where they didn't have it. They didn't even know what it looked like. And I was trying to um, show them something that didn't exist. That was very hard. Like I had my own blank paper, you know? Um, and I think what made it challenging was um, it wasn't like a new culture that I could create right away that no one knew any different. I had to change and shift a culture. Um, and it was the way I looked at it is like remodeling a house where the Ohio State, I, I feel is like the pinnacle of athletics. It's, you know, it, it strives for excellence, as you were talking about, and it has a great foundation, but the women's hockey team needed to be remodeled. Like they have an immense amount of pride of being an athlete here, but they didn't have an immense amount of pride in being a hockey player here. And so I had to get their mind right of what it looked like to be a winner, to be a champion. And we had to have goals, as you mentioned, within our staff and within players, but they had to be obtainable because I didn't want to go and say, we're going to win the conference. I didn't want to go and say, we're going to win the national championship because they weren't realistic goals. And right. when you don't reach them, then they feel like they failed. And we had to find successes within ourselves um, to then strive for the next bar to be higher each year. Right. And so um, what I did was, you know, I don't know if people know this, but if you were a junior on the team, when I first came in, I was the third coach in three years. And so they didn't have the same coach twice. And so my biggest thing, and I contribute a lot of this to you because you always say coach their heart. And so I took that, you know, deeply and I decided like every other week I would have a meeting with a player. So each uh, bi-weekly, they would have meetings with me. And it wasn't about hockey. It was just about life, social, family, school. And um, it was just a moment of trying to establish trust and respect. Because if they don't have that for a coach, they're not going to play for you. It doesn't matter. Because there's so many coaches out there that have great X's and O's and understand the game. But you got to have your players want to play for you. And they have to believe in you. And so once... Um, once I started to establish that, we, we jumped two spots in the conference from the year before. And then my second year, um, I created that cultural blueprint like you had the constitution for GWH. And it's funny hearing it because I hadn't heard that in a long time, but maybe it was embedded in the back of my brain because a lot of what I have is what you just spoke about. We, we decided to do it. I worked with a group called Focus 3 and an active Navy SEAL. His name's Scott Daly, and he's going to work with our team more this year again. But him and I really sat down and he said, Muzz, it's your team. Players come and go, but it's got to be what you believe in, but it's got to speak to them. And so we came up with our four beliefs and what those behaviors would look like within each of those beliefs and what was that outcome going to be. 